Now, let's take a look at the Bible. All right, they claim to be defenders of the women's rights. So now, look at, let's take a look at their book, what their book says about one. So it's the, the prophecy of Isaiah that God commands the Isaiah to go and, you know, uh, destroy the Babylonians. So because they have done, you know, they did uh, bad things to you. So now it's chance for you to take your vengeance back. So what God's command Isaiah here is, he says to Isaiah that their an infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be looted. Their wives violated. So... It's actually permissible according to the Old Testament, right? According to the Bible, a, a, you know, gang rape is, is permissible according to the Bible. Look at the other verse. It says, if a man sells his daughter as a servant, she is not to go free as male servants do. So if, if it's permissible in the Bible, you know, in Christianity or in Judaism to sell your daughter as a servant. I don't want to bring the whole context. The whole context is totally hideous. So you have to go and check it out for yourself. If you go and read it more and more, you're going to hate it. And that's that much hideous. So the, now, a Christian might argue that I'm not, you know, following the Old Testament. I'm following the New Testament. But according to the Christians, you know, the God of the Old Testament, Yahweh, is Jesus. Jesus is Yahweh, according to them. If Jesus is Yahweh, so these are the commands of Jesus. So Jesus ordered ordered these you know mass killings and all these these you know uh, things in the Old Testament. Now let's move on. It says if a, a woman should learn in quietness and full submission, I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over a man. In the Quran, we actually like we mentioned that a woman can have authority over a man, but here it says that she must be quiet and learn in quietness and full submission. Let's move on. It says, For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. So, the, all, all those actual like problems, all of the, the fault of the Adam, all of those things, Eve is to be blamed because of that. You know? And the, Bi the Bible actually like criticizes Eve for the sin of Adam. Adam had a mind. Eve, had, you know, had a mind. They should have thought for them, for themselves, that they shouldn't eat from this, you know, from this tree that God forbade them to do. But now here in the Bible it says that it was the, you know, the problem of Eve. Eve was the one who was deceived. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at the other verse. It's in Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 18, it says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. So, the position of the Lord, you know, is, uh, is the position of the husbands is as kind of like the position of the Lord, the position of God to the, to, to the women, to their wives. Well, so, let's move on. It says that, Wives, submit, yourse submit yourself to your own husband as you do to the Lord. Again, notice here, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to, to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband in everything, in everything. They should submit themselves to their husbands. They're, they're second class, so according to the Bible. That's the New Testament, by the way. <clears throat> Look at the... 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34, it says, Women should remain silent in churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. Wow. So they should not speak in the churches. And uh, what, they should, what should they do then? I don't know. So they are calling Islam misogynist. You know, they are calling Islam a misogynist religion. This is, you know, the New Testament saying these things. And they are calling Islam the misogynist religion. Oh, unbelievable. So let's carry on. It says in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 14, it says, If a man marries both a woman and her mother, it's wicked. Both he and they must be burned in the fire, so that no wickedness will be among you. The other verse, it says, If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, 
she disgraces her father, she must be burned in the fire. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 9. So it's actually like, you. it is sanctioned in the Bible to burn people as well when they are doing bad things. So let's see what the Prophet ﷺ said about burning people. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari, book 58, Hadith 166, it says, وَإِنَّ النَّارَ لَا يُؤَذِّبُ بِهَا إِلَى اللَّهِ but as punishment with fire is done by none except Allah. So nobody, no one is allowed in Islam to burn people. So let's carry on. It's Islamically, it's, it's not allowed for any Muslim to burn anyone for any reason. Even, it's, I, I, even if it's wicked or good or bad or whatever it is. So in another verse, it's, it's in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse uh, 13 to 21. It says, if a man takes a wife and after sleeping with her dislikes her and slanders her and gives her a bad name saying I married this woman but I, when I approach her I did not find proof of her virginity then the young woman's father and mother shall bring to the town, to the town elders at the gate proof of that she was a virgin. Her father will say to the elders I gave my daughter in marriage to this man but he dislikes her now he has slandered her and said, I did not find your daughter to be a virgin, but here's the proof of my daughter's virginity. Then her parents shall display the cloth before the elders of the town, and the elders shall take the man and punish him. They shall find him a hundred shekels of silver and give them to the young woman's father, because this man has given an Israelite virgin a bad name. She shall continue to be his wife. He must not divorce her as long as he lives. So uh, imagine, so let, let's carry on and we will talk about that, we will discuss, we will have a discussion about this. If, however, the charge is true and no proof of the young woman's virginity can be found, she shall be brought to the door, door of her father's house, and there the man of her town shall stone her to death. He has done an outrageous thing in Israel by being promiscuous while still in her father's house. You must purge the evil from among you. So... It is, you know, according to the biblical law, right? You have to bring the cloth. What if the woman, the young lady is actually is innocent and the cloth is not there at the first place, right? She will most likely get stoned to death you know, if, the cloth, if the cloth is not there. And the other thing is, even if he slandered her, so he cannot divorce her as long as he lives. So somebody slanders the woman, right? And he continues to be, you know, his, uh, her husband, you know, what kind of a just law is that? And other, all right. So, let alone that, it says that uh, they should, brought, uh, she shall be brought to the door of her father's house, and there the man of the town shall stone her to death. So, what's the, what's the, you know, the, the, uh, the crime of his, her father? You know, they should bring her to the her father's house, and there in front of her father's house, they, she shall be stoned to death. What kind of law is this? Anyway, let's 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 carry on. Let's carry on. Let's take a look at another verse. It says, "It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery." So, according to the New Testament, according to Jesus, if it's uh, apart from sexual immorality, a couple cannot divorce each other. So they should uh, uh, stay as long as they, uh, you know, as long as they are alive and something like that. If if uh, sexual immorality doesn't happen in their relationship, so and uh, now the other thing is that if if someone marries a divorced woman, he commits adultery. So you're not uh, you're not allowed to marry a divorced woman, according to uh, the New Testament. So what should they do then? Uh, for, ex uh, for example, a man is a wife beater, right? A man who is actually like abuses his wife, is a drug lord or something like that. So she cannot divorce her according to the law of the New Testament, right? So let's carry on. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 5 to 10 it says but every woman who prays or prophecies with her head uncovered dishonors her head it's the same as having her head shaved for a woman does not cover her head she might as well have her hair cut off but if if it's a disgrace for a woman to have her head cut off or her head shaved then she should cover her head 
a man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and the go and glory of God but woman is the glory of man for woman for man did not come from woman but woman ca uh, from man neither was man created for woman but woman were for man it is for this reason that a woman ought to have authority over her own head because of the angels so if if a woman prophesies or prays without uh, her head covered so uh, her head will be shaved that's what mr paul says in you know first corinthians chapter 11 verse 5 to 10 look at the other verse it says if a man happens to meet in a town of virgin flesh to be married and he sleeps with her you shall take both of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The young woman, because she was in a town and did not scream for help, and the man, because he violated another man's wife, he must purge the evil from among you. So now, uh, why I brought this verse? You know, the reason that I brought this verse was this: if a woman, you know, screamed, when no one, nobody heard her, so what's going to happen to her then? So she screamed and nobody heard her and. Uh, she will most likely get stoned by this uh, biblical law. So look at the other verse. It's in Leviticus tw uh, chapter 12, verse 2 to 5. It says, If a woman gives birth to a baby boy, then she becomes unclean for seven days. But if she gives birth to a baby girl, then she becomes unclean for 40 days. So according to the biblical law, females are, uh, are you know, more unclean than males are. Look at the other verse. It says, if a man has sexual relations with an animal, he must be put to death and you must kill the animal. All right, uh, let's go to other words and we will evaluate that. If a woman approaches an animal, approaches an animal to have sexual relations with it, kill both the woman and the animal. They must be put to death. Their bl blood will be on their own heads. So it says that, uh, first of all, uh, it says that a woman, if a woman approaches to have sexual relations, so, so she uh, she didn't have any sexual relationship, but she intend, intends to do, you know, the uh, sexual relation with this animal, with this particular animal. So you, what, what you're going to do is that you should kill both of them. So the woman will, doesn't do any bad thing, but she's more likely to get killed because of, you know, her intentions. And... Why should we kill an animal at first place, right? If a man or a woman, you know, has a sexual relation with an animal, why should we kill the animal at first place? What is the, you know, the crime of the animal? Why should we, the animal should be blamed because a man or a woman, uh, you know, uh, has intercourse with it, with it. So that's actually the law of Bible. So it's a biblical law. Now look at take a look at the other words. It says, if two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant and she reaches out and seizes him by his private parts, you shall cut off her hand, show her no pity. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 11 to 12. And, you know, be, be careful when your husband is actually fighting someone to not uh, reach the, somebody by the private part or your hand will be cut off, even if you're right. So, it's in book of Genesis, uh, chapter 38, verse 2, 6 and 9. And this verse, Judah, you know, got a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, sleep with your brother's wife and fulfill your duty to her as a brother-in-law to raise up offspring for your brother. You know, fulfill your duty fulfill your duty so uh, 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 how can you raise up an offspring for your brother right that's actually interesting and the other thing is that we were we were talking about a few verses uh you know a few minutes ago about uh, the uh, verses of the quran right and uh, in the previous video we were talking about the verses of the quran and in the Quran, God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you cannot inherit, you know, the inherit a woman. So according to the Bible, you cannot, you can inherit, you know, at some point it was something like this. So you could inherit, you know, the wives of your deceased family members. And look at the other uh, book. It's the Roman Catholic Bible. 
It's a book from the Roman Catholic Bible. It's it, its name is Ecclesiasticus, and in, it is it is said in Ecclesiasticus that it's a disgrace to have fathered uh, fathered a badly brought up son, and the birth of any daughter is a loss. And the other verse in the same book it says, "A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will be will fear the Lord." So, so according to the Bible, a shameless woman is a Dog. So let's go to the canonical saints of Christianity. What they said about the woman. Woman is a daughter of falsehood, a sentinel of hell, the enemy of peace. Through her, Adam lost paradise. Uh, Saint John of Damascene or Damascus. Woman is the instrument which the devil po use, uh, uses to gain possession of our souls. Saint Cyprian. Woman is the fountain of the arm of the devil. Her voice is the hissing of the serpent. Saint Anthony. Woman has the poison of an asp, the malice of a dragon, St. Gregory. So these are the canonical, uh, you know, uh, saints of Christianity. And I actually like one advice for those people that are attacking Islam using women. Just first look at your own book, right? First, first look at your own book and then come attack Islam. Because if you don't look at it, you will actually like be, you will be embarrassed and you will be shown the truth in a very, very embarrassing manner that I have showed you. So, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That was the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed it, please uh, give, the, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends as well so that it may, uh, you know, raise awareness.